Daniel Crosslink, welcome back to yet another video. Today we're talking about extruder calibration and how to do it on your 3D printer and we're starting right now. So why is calibrating your extruder important? Well, if an extruder isn't calibrated correctly, this can cause all kinds of printing quality issues. For example, if your extruder is over extruding by a lot, it can cause blobbing and stringing issues in your prints. In the very extreme, it can also cause nozzle clogs, which we definitely want to prevent. Under extrusion, on the other hand, has negative effects on the stability of your prints. It can cause bad layer adhesion, so prints can literally fall apart if you take them off the build plate or later if they are functional parts, they can just crack much more easier if you had an under extruding extruder. And another problem, especially in over extrusion, is if you need a part to be dimensionally accurate, the over extrusion can cause the part to become bigger, especially on the outside, because the blobbing causes also the parts to extend on the outer layer a little bit more. So if that is a part that needs to precisely fit in somewhere, over extrusion can make this part a little bit too large. So we definitely want to fix that. If you remember last week's video where I was talking about dimensional accuracy and how to fix that, I can also recommend to watch that video. It's linked up here in the corner. Today, this process will look very similar in terms of the commands that we are sending to the printer. It's just a little bit different in terms how we measure the accuracy itself. So let's get started. So I want to make this as universal for every printer as possible. We are talking about an Bowden extrusion system here on the Ender 3, but it also works similar on a direct drive extruder. So the first step to do is to get your filament into the system. In this case, I've inserted it into the Bowden tube so it touches the nozzle. And on the direct drive, you want to also insert the filament. And the next step is to heat up your printer to the preheat temperature of the material that you're using. In this case, it's PLA. I'm also taking my USB cable and I'm connecting this printer to my computer so I can send over the commands necessary to do the final calibration and also saving the settings to the printer. To connect to my printer, I'm using Pronterface. That is a software that's a freeware that you can use to connect to your printer. You can send over commands to your printer. Alternatively, you can use Octoprint. In Octoprint, you have a terminal tab that you can also use to send commands to your printer. So the next step is to take a permanent marker and find a point on the filament that is exactly 120 millimeters away from the extruder inlet. So I'm marking that point and I can do it in different ways. I can use a ruler and put it against the inlet and then mark the point where we have 120 millimeters. That is kind of accurate. You can also use a digital caliper, which might be more accurate, but it's also not as easy. So you need to find something that works for you. So now since we marked the filament, we can now extrude 100 millimeters of filament into the system using a command. So the printer is now ready, the filament is heated up. The next thing that we need to do is to send over a G1 command, extracting 100 millimeters at a very low extraction speed, so the extruder won't skip. So I'm sending this now. An extruder is going to start extracting very, very slowly, as you can see. You can see here is our little mark where we originally marked it 120 millimeters away from the inlet. And as a next step, I want to take the pen and mark the filament again right at the start of the inlet. So it's really marked clearly. So I'm going to measure now the distance between those two markings. And because if it extracted exactly 100 millimeters of filament, the distance between those two markings should be precisely 20 millimeters. But here in the close up, you see it is actually 22 millimeters left. So the calculation works like this. We have the extracted amount that we want to calculate and we take the 120 millimeters of original distance and subtract the distance between the markings that we had after the extraction happened. And that means in our example, we had 120 millimeters minus the 22 millimeters that we measured means we extracted 98 millimeters. 
So this is an under extrusion example, but an over extrusion example would look like this. You would have the original 120 millimeters at distance of, for example, 15 millimeters. And then we would have extracted actually 105 millimeters of filament. So we would be over extruding. What comes into play is the so-called E-steps, extruder steps. We need to know how many E-steps the extruder motor needs to make to actually extract 100 millimeters of filament. So the next step is to take the measured value and put it into my calculation spreadsheet. This is the spreadsheet, you've already seen it in my last video where we calculated the step up values for the X, Y and Z axis. And today we're doing this for the extruder. So what I'm doing now, I'm entering here the measured dimension. So in our case, I measured that I actually extruded 98 millimeters of filament, whereas I wanted to extrude 100, but we're still missing the stepper value, the E-step value from the printer. So to get the E-step value for the extruder, I'm sending the printer the M503 command from Prontoface, and I'm looking at the result of the M92 line, which is saying the extruder value is 93.0. That means 93.0 steps need to be done currently to extract 100 millimeter of filament, but we now know that it's not actually doing 100 millimeters. And now the result of the calculation sheet is that to do 100 millimeter of filament, you need to do 94.9 E step. So we could round that value to 95, but we can also just enter the value that has been calculated because the rounding will happen in the firmware anyways. So let's take the 94.90 result value and put it back into the printer. So how do we do that? We sent the printer a M92 E94.9 and just to double check, I'm sending an M503 command that gives me the new value. So it shows M92 and we have the new value of 94.9 set. Now the last thing to do is to send the printer an M500 command to store those new values into the EEPROM. So the Excel spreadsheet would make a second round of calibration easier because it already transferred the new value from the first round here into the second section. And all you had to do in the second round is to do the second measurement, put it into this field here, and it would give you a correction value if it would be any different from the previous one. But I'm pretty confident that uh, with the first round, it's already pretty accurate. You can download the spreadsheet from my website. The link is in the description of this video. So go ahead and download it and use it. And I hope to see you next time on our channel for another video. See you, bye bye.